Good everybody. I would ask everybody to uh, take their seat, but that would leave some of you out. So those that can find a seat, please do. And those uh, uh, who uh, haven't got one, uh, don't worry, we won't keep you on your feet uh, too long. But uh, welcome everyone. It is, there's always a risk on very happy occasions of hyperbole but I don't think it's gonna be possible to engage in any uh, today. Um, this is, I say without much fear or contradiction, one of the biggest days in Purdue history, and it is much more than that. Uh, it is uh, in the next half hour, you're gonna, I think, uh, hear those contentions uh, validated and substantiated. It's a very big day in the history of an industry, and not just any industry, the industry that is probably as central as any to the success of our economy and literally our national uh, security. It's an historic day for the state's economy, not just by virtue of the size of the announcement that you're about to hear, but its nature, the kind of investment, the kind of, ac of economic activity that is coming to our state. And it's a huge day for Purdue's future, um, so much that we have envisioned and, and, um, and hoped for in terms of building at this place a more vibrant and attractive environment so that the brightest minds in the world will want to come and study and teach and research and live here. And also what we've hoped to become as a genuine uh, major contributor to a stronger state's economy full of greater opportunities for all our fellow citizens. Um, so you'll now hear, I believe, substantiation of those uh, assertions from the uh, following people. They will appear without further introduction. You will be hearing from our great governor, Eric Holcomb, and from then from his Secretary of Commerce, Brad Chambers, they are in the middle of a record-breaking year already for new uh, investment, new jobs in our state prior to today's announcement. Then by video, uh, you will uh, be hearing from Dr. Dev Shinoy, who's the Director of Microelectronics at the nation's Department of Defense. And following him, our own Senator Todd Young, who literally today, is involved in final negotiations for the uh, essential federal legislation, which will make this event uh, possible, as well as many, many others across the country in advancing the, the goals that I talked about earlier. But first, the star of our show, uh, with the momentous uh, news that has brought us all together today, I would ask you all to please give a warm Boilermaker welcome, Tom Sonderman, the president and CEO of Skywater Technology. Tom. Good morning. Uh, thank you, President Daniels. I am so pleased to be here today to announce our plans to build a $1.8 billion next generation semiconductor manufacturing facility in West Lafayette, Indiana, in partnership with the state of Indiana and Purdue University. You keep clapping, it's good. This collaboration presents a unique opportunity to increase domestic semiconductor production, secure our supply chains, and lead the way in manufacturing technologies that will support the future of microelectronics. There couldn't be a better place for us to announce our new manufacturing facility than here in the Neil Armstrong Hall of Engineering. Because today, our nation celebrates the 53rd anniversary of the first moonwalk. In a speech at Rice University in 1962, President Kennedy roused support for America's mission to the moon with a speech that celebrated the determination of America's innovators, stating that we choose to do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. 
because they demonstrate our will to overcome and achieve, and because they lend significant benefit to society and our country. The symbolism is striking. Just like in 1969, today we're making another moonshot, this time to reestablish global leadership in semiconductor innovation and manufacturing. And just like then, we are committing to bring the weight of our innovation and determination together to achieve something extraordinary. Skywater's Indiana Fab will be the most advanced next generation fab ever built, enabling mass customization of highly innovative solutions by using intelligent automation that seamlessly combines R&D with high volume wafer manufacturing. This initiative will build more than capability and capacity in the US. It will also become the blueprint that will define how fabs are built and operated for decades to come. Our aim is to address the ongoing worldwide chip shortage to contribute to the reshoring of semiconductor manufacturing, to position America to regain the leading edge in advanced technologies, and to develop needed technology talent while also creating many high paying jobs here in America's heartland. That Before I continue, I'd like to briefly acknowledge some key individuals with us today who are not on stage, but are remarkable partners for Skywater. Ajit Manosha, President and CEO of SEMI, former Global Foundries colleague. Former U.S. Senator Norm Coleman, been instrumental in Skywater's evolution. And former Assistant Secretary of U.S. Department of Commerce, Ian Stuff. There he is over here. Thank you for your collaboration. There is no better partner for this initiative than Purdue University. We talk a lot about lab to fab in the semiconductor industry. The proximity of this new fab to Purdue and its pipeline of talented engineers will facilitate that ideal. I am inspired by Purdue's commitment to the semiconductor industry first semiconductor degrees program, which will offer interdis interdisciplinary degrees and credentials targeted at semiconductors and microelectronics. In addition, the Burke Nanotechnology Center is making impressive strides every day in building a high-tech ecosystem that amplifies Purdue's history of incubating technology. I must also acknowledge the SCALE program managed by Purdue and sponsored by our friends at NSWC Crane. The program provides courses, mentoring, internship matching, and targeted research projects for college students in three microtonics area, areas radiation hardening, heterogeneous integration, and system on a chip. These three core areas are central to Skywater's customer base. The overlap is an obvious attraction for our support of the program, but importantly, getting to work with potential employees who are learning to work in a secure and trusted environment can facilitate their transition to private companies like Skywater who have a close intimate relationship with the Department of Defense. Skywater is proud to be America's foundry. We have successfully executed multiple public-private partnerships throughout the course of our company's history, and we're ready to do it again with the state of Indiana. The ecosystem partnership that is developing in Indiana is happening at a time when the country is coming together to reinvest at the federal, state, and the industry level to drive innovation and secure domestic manufacturing. Much of what is happening here in Indiana today is due to great partners like Dr. Matt Kay. Where are you at, Matt? Right there, right in front, of course, Matt. And his other uh, great partners at NSWC Crane. We are in an intersection where America can make the choice to invest in our future, our slowly fade in relevance as other nations take up the mantle to lead the world in semiconductor innovation. We have so much promise and opportunities before us. That is why it's critical that Congress pass the CHIPS legislation. They must act with a sense of urgency because every minute they wait is a minute lost. This is an ambitious project, but if we could figure out how to send a man to the moon and get him home safely in just over eight years, we can definitely do this. Just like then, this is our moonshot. I believe against the backdrop of unprecedented semiconductor industry demand, Indiana is well positioned to cultivate 
the intellectual firepower and vigorous business environment needed to create an enduring semiconductor ecosystem. And I'm so pleased that Skywater will be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tom. And just like President Daniels said, these occasions uh, tempt us with hyperbole and exaggeration. Some politicians might even embellish from 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 time to time. Uh, but like those occasions where you feel it necessary to lightly applause, this was uh, one of those announcements where I never I, I didn't feel like stopping applauding. And I am going to pile on with with uh, praise for what is occurring today and every day hereafter. I want to congratulate your crew, uh, Tom, uh, for not just planting your flag here in Tippecanoe County, uh, but for carrying out this mission and for taking a real leadership role in it. This, this campus has fostered pioneers for decades and continues to set its sights far over the horizon. And today is just a perfect example of that culture uh, that you're becoming a crew member of. And we couldn't be more proud. I think I will just state the obvious and, and tell you, we think you chose wisely. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you mentioned the upwards of 1.8 billion now and the 750 these initial 750 careers, not just jobs, but ever evolving careers for what comes next. It just doesn't get any better than this. And to be rebuilding, to be assisting our nation in catching up uh, on rebuilding that very foundation right alongside some of the brightest minds in the world Today truly sets in motion that here in Indiana, we're not, we're not predicting the future, we're defining it. And this is a proud, proud Hoosier day. And I'm confident, Tom, you came to, you came to realize from that very first meeting and every day and meeting thereafter, including most recently at our Global Economic Summit, um, that you have committed partners here at the county, here in West Lafayette and Lafayette, certainly with President Daniels and Mung and the whole, again, crew that's been assembled, Secretary Chambers, our senior Senator Todd Young, who is a hero for what he's been shepherding to date. We have more work to do, but this is a big step and uh, first step in the in the right direction for our for our nation, and we truly do. As Mitch mentioned, this is important so much so that it's really our duty uh, to make sure that you are successful in this endeavor. There's a lot at stake, and to be thinking about Hoosier made products that you just don't buy at the convenience store. But everything that you do buy at the convenience store is in one way or another tethered to that. Right here in this semiconductor corridor that is emerging before our very eyes in large part because of President Daniels and his foresight and his vision and his follow through and courage when some others may have shirked from that duty and what was at stake. To do it here in this hall, Neil Armstrong Hall, where not even the ceiling or the sky's the limit, to put together this semiconductor degree program, 
that's going to be the perfect kind of hand in glove complement to your immediate and ultimate efforts. This is where big, bold ideas lift off in record time. Not just put into motion, but are realized. And that's going to continue to strengthen what is so fragile, and that's that supply chain. And we're seeing that all over the world. And for Indiana and for America to step up and answer that call, I can't think of anything more important. Contributing to our connectivity, contributing to our, as was mentioned, national security, economic security. It's why our task force, and I'm so pleased to see so many folks in the state administration here and, and part of this day, because they're not just here to celebrate. They're here for every step of this journey. And to have people on the workforce cabinet, to have Dr. Jenner, to have Chris Lowry, to have Dr. Elsperman, to have people who it is their duty to make sure you succeed. We succeed. And I can't think of anything that Neil Armstrong would be more proud of. You mentioned 53 years ago that one small step. This is a giant leap forward for Skywater, for Purdue, for Indiana, indeed for America. And so, Tom, again, to you and your crew, boiler up and hammer down. We're in it every step of the way. Thank you. Congratulations. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Governor. It is always great to be here at Purdue. So thank you, um, President Daniels, for, for your hosting us. Congratulations, Tom. It feels like it was just yesterday, our first meeting in Indianapolis to discuss your hopes and dreams for the future of the semiconductor industry in this incredible project. Frankly, the whole year has felt quick. It's been almost 12 months since the governor pulled me out of my comfortable private sector job to help grow and steer Indiana's economy. I haven't had my formal one-year review yet, Governor. But with humility, I'd say Indiana has had a pretty good year with $17 billion of capital investment in our first six months, a 350% increase year over year. The most exciting of which, though, is what we're celebrating today, welcoming this great company and this great team to the Indiana family. Skywater is a special company. Tom, your visionary leadership and your talented team, yet thorough, have been a pleasure to work with. Our visions of building a prosperous future for not just the state, but for the nation align perfectly. Indiana is committed and determined to support Skywater's future success and profitability. I was speaking with President Daniels just last week and found myself thinking about the years of Purdue leadership that has helped us reach this point. And I felt <clears throat> a sense of gratitude. Gratitude for those at Purdue who believed microelectronics was the path ahead and advocated for the industry as an opportunity for our state. Gratitude for President Daniel's vision for Discovery Park and its uplifting effect on West Lafayette and Lafayette and Purdue generally. Gratitude for the entire team at Purdue and their collective contributions. Because of clear goal setting and ambitious action, Purdue, like our state, generally continues to lead in almost every conceivable way, in academics, in research, in innovation, in corporate partnerships. But as with any major accomplishment, it took a village to get us across the finish line. And I want to recognize that village. A couple of hometown guys, Ian Steph, recognized earlier. Thank you for your guidance through this important project and Victor Smith as well. The team at Crane Naval Airfare Center, Warfare Center. Thank you, Phil and, and Matt, for, for your participation and guidance. 
Dave Roberts and Jimmy Costa, the leaders at IEDC's new AMPT Semiconductor Task Force. These guys, Dave Roberts has been toiling in this space for years and years, and he's rewarded today and, and all, all his hard work. But thanks, guys. The IDC business development team, Ann Lathrop, Brock Herr, and of course, Jessica Tower, who is on point on this important project. Our critically important workforce partners here today, Tony Denhart, Dr. Elsperman, Dr. Jenner, Chris Lowry, Chuck Johnson, among so many others uh, on this important topic of workforce readiness. Of course, Purdue led by President Daniels and uh, Ding Chang, thank you for all you're doing and have done. Tom, John and the whole Skywater team, we're so darn excited. Thank you, Mayor Dennis, Mayor Rosworski, uh, and Tippecanoe County, without your support and partnership, this would not have happened today. Senator Todd Young, obviously, uh, leading the charge on bringing semiconductors back to the USA. A huge congratulations to Senator Young for getting chips through just last night. Governor and the legislature for providing the tools to do this. Thank you again for being here to celebrate this wonderful announcement for the Hoosier State. Skywater, we thank you. We are with you and together we'll address America's national security priorities and Indiana's economic growth aspirations. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Eric Holcomb and Purdue University President Mitch Daniels for inviting me to this timely event. We are here to recognize Skywater's investment in a new state-of-the-art semiconductor manufacturing facility in the Discovery Park District at Purdue. This represents a major investment in the future of U.S. microelectronics and highlights the importance of public-private partnerships in fostering a domestic microelectronics industry. As some of you know, I am the principal director of microelectronics, and I'm here today representing Honorable Mishu, DOD's Chief Technology Officer. The U.S. innovation ecosystem has long been the driver of our nation's technology leadership throughout the world. The U.S. government R&D kickstarted the enormous semiconductor industry, which enables the innovative products and advanced defense systems that are essential to U.S. dominance across both commercial and military sectors. However, the microelectronics fabrication and innovation ecosystem are increasingly moving overseas, driven by commercial demands. U.S. production has dropped from about 37% in 1990 to nearly 12% today. Continued leadership in innovation, design, and manufacturing capability is critical to maintain technological superiority. To address these challenges, the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Research and Engineering, or usd &E, trusted and assured microelectronics TNAM program is investing in the U.S. microelectronics sector to create broader competitiveness and enable defense programs to more rapidly modernize and innovate by keeping pace with commercial technology. The TNAM program is leveraging commercial and academic partnerships to accelerate and demonstrate new technologies domestically and provide DOD programs access to advanced technologies. Skywater has been a key partner in expanding domestic foundry capability that will serve dual use commercial and defense systems for years to come. Additionally, the TNAM's scalable asymmetric life cycle engagement or the SCALE program has partnered with 16 universities, including Purdue, Notre Dame, and Indiana University to provide educational and workforce opportunities for over 200 students across five key microelectronics modernization priorities. These successful partnerships are leading the way in strengthening U.S. microelectronics. In summary, while I have touched on some of DOD's active technology thrusts and areas for collaboration, there are many further challenges and opportunities to explore. The department is committed to ensuring a robust and thriving microelectronics ecosystem 
that delivers critical technologies for our economy and our war fighter. At this time, I want to thank you again for having me tune in virtually. I hope we can continue working together and enhancing U.S. microelectronics in partnership with the state of Indiana, the academia, and the defense industry. Thank you. Greetings from Washington, D.C. I regret that I couldn't be with you in person today to celebrate Skywater's investment in Indiana. This announcement's the culmination of months and months of planning and partnership between Skywater, Purdue, Governor Holcomb, the IEDC, and many others. I've been doing my part in Washington telling anyone who will listen that we must invest in next generation technologies if we are to out innovate and out compete our strategic rivals and win the 21st century. I remain in Washington today as the Senate is on the verge of passing again, the bill that will help make this announcement a reality. More than two years ago, I began fighting for a major down payment in the future of our economy, our supply chain, and our national defense capabilities. That legislation includes a $52 billion investment for semiconductor manufacturing here on our home soil. The United States is almost entirely reliant on other countries for our supply of these critical electronic components. When supply chains are disrupted, as they were in 2020, and when our rivals threaten the sovereignty of other nations, as they continue to do, the United States of America mustn't be in a position of weakness. No, we must lean into what has made our economy the strongest in the history of the world, the ability to invent, to innovate, and to build the products that the world needs right here. It's imperative for the success of this announcement and future deals to follow that we get this legislation passed and signed into law. When it is, the state of Indiana will be positioned, as well as any state, to capitalize on our investments. The governor, the IEDC, higher ed, and private enterprise have partnered to create a semiconductor corridor here in the heartland. Purdue was the first university to launch degree and certificate programs in the areas of semiconductors and microelectronics, and companies like Skywater are investing in our people. So I am grateful for all you've done to make today's announcement a reality, and I'm looking forward to what the future has in store. Thank you. Thanks to all our presenters. At the outset, I asserted that today was a significant day in multiple dimensions. I hope that the last few moments have documented that claim to your satisfaction. This is a major event, as Tom said, in reestablishing an industry that's never been so central or vital uh, to our national prosperity and, and even to our national safety. It's proof positive that the governor and Secretary Chambers uh, spoke uh, accurately as they have talked about not only the superiority of Indiana's overall business climate, but its suitability not just to the great industries we've always known, but to the front edge industries of today and tomorrow. And for us at Purdue, I hope it's safe to say this is further validation of not of the innovative innovation district concept that we began envisioning just a few years ago. It uh, absolutely, I must tell you, cements its fiscal success. The Public officials here will be happy to hear this. Uh, we were already way ahead of schedule, well over a third of the way toward the investment necessary to pay back the so the obligations of the so-called tax increment financing district. This announcement alone covers the obligation that we still have 16 years to work on. Um, and. Um, John Dennis, I just I have to say, as always, our mayor, mayors, Mayor Rosworski and John, and Dennis never miss one of these occasions. But 
John, uh, this is special. And uh, when you and I stood in the middle of what was then a state highway bisecting this campus, separating us from the town, and thought about what could be at the end of what was then a, um, empty space, I think we had in mind something like um, what we've seen in that in the interval since I'm not sure even you and I imagined a day quite as big as this. This is your day, John. And finally, I, I believe that today is a, a great day of fulfillment in what I have always believed was a, not just an opportunity, but a fundamental responsibility of a land-grant university, of a STEM-centric land-grant university in a high-tech economy of today. And that is to do whatever it can do to assist our governor, his secretary of commerce, all their teammates, as an economic engine and driver for this state. And I think today we can we can fairly say that we've chipped, uh, chipped in yet again. But I'll end as we always do on days of, of, of advance at Purdue University with those two important, most important words so far. <laughs> Any old saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you for coming, and let's go celebrate.